Hello Internet and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about China and clean air, two things that get along so poorly they can't even be in the same room together. China is making huge moves in the fight against global warming by making a massive switch from coal to natural gas, which is definitely an improvement, although it's kind of like saying I'm going to eat healthier by switching from this arsenic based diet to eating this supersized meat diet. More importantly, Republicans, if you think there's a war on coal in America, you should look across the water. China's transition, wanted, they want to jump very fast, f transitioning from uh, producing electricity from coal uh, to using more natural gas. And now we see a gap that is the market is not having enough supply of the gas, whereas there's also a government regulatory gap between what they wanted to do and how it can be implemented locally in an effective manner. Now that story sounds pretty boring, but in actuality many people died as a result of what he was talking about, and it's led to ongoing problems that, interestingly enough, reflect on a major difference between how America and China get things done. So first, what happened? Well, China realized that they had a problem. Their air had the distinct flavor of sucking on a penny. And when from your bed you can smell whether it's going to be a sunny day or not, you have a problem. So what's the solution? Well, that's really the difference between the US and China, because here in America we identify the problem, debate it in Congress for a long while, and then the chair of the Environment and Public Works Committee brings a snowball to prove that maybe democracy isn't all it's cracked up to be, and something about climate change. And we all agree to stay the course and hope other polluters cut down on their emissions. Well, in China, according to an Observer article, the Ministry of Environmental Protection of China sent a memo to city officials and the heads of state-owned energy companies regarding air quality control in the winter season spanning from 2017 to 2018. Now, the Ministry of Environmental Protection in China is a little different from the EPA, because in China one does not simply question the Communist Party. You see, in China the Communist Party is one hell of a great party that everyone wants to be invited to. So if you get a request from them, you're not just going to do it, but you're going to do it better than every other regional leader. This means that when Xi asks you to stop burning coal, you're going to be shutting down coal powered factories, stopping the sale of coal, and even locking down the chimneys for those who have been naughty so Santa can't give it to them. And side note, if anyone who has a surveillance system to rival that of Santa, it's probably going to be the Chinese Communist Party. Oh, you bet you they know when you're sleeping and they know when you're awake. Anyways, that last part might sound like a throwaway joke, but that's where a lot of this problem came from. People's chimneys. According to Bloomberg View, with millions of homes left with insufficient energy for cooking and heating, anger on social media grew fierce. And we're not talking about places with the climate of Vietnam, we're talking about places that truly beg the question, why would anyone want to live there? Take Linfen, Shangxi province for instance. According to Singaporean newspaper The Straits Times, one woman in Linfen, Shangxi province who declined to be identified said all of the boilers in her village had been dismantled, but work on new gas pipelines appeared to be nowhere near completion. And any family will tell you the dead of winter in a snowy province is not the perfect time to tear up and reinvent the infrastructure for heating your entire village. That's like waiting for Thanksgiving dinner to announce you're a vegetarian. She went on to clarify a fun new catchphrase that her local government began to use in referring to this coal ban. The local communist party committee had warned residents against burning coal for heating with the slogan, if your home has smoke coming out of it, see you in the detention center. Which I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe in Mandarin that has a little whimsy, rhymes, or somehow captures the spirit of the season. But still, jeez. The ban's actually legally been enforced as well, with citizens of several cities being detained for up to five days for using coal to heat their homes in freezing cold weather and selling coal on the streets. And yet somehow the US still manages to have 7 times higher incarcerated population rates than them. 
Anyways, this led to the death of many people based on either sickness or carbon monoxide poisoning from trying to heat their home while keeping the smoke from going through the chimney. Most striking was reports of children getting frostbitten at school, and some classes even being taught outside so they could use the sun's heat. Now that's objectively bad, but if you're a student with any game, what a way to start a school relationship. Hey, want to cuddle for warmth? My body runs hot. How did this happen though? I mean, the Chinese government is in North Korea, they have their act together. Well, They were banking on natural gas. The Chinese government was urging these countries to transition from coal and natural gas and energy and heat supplies in much the same way my dad was encouraging me to transition to being able to swim by throwing me in the deep end of a pool. Now the government miscalculation here happened because of many things. First, because communism can only do so much. The price of natural gas went up 70% in a matter of months, which put the squeeze on the rich and even industries at large. Bloomberg reports that Chinese steel mills are operating at rates as low as 43%. Aluminum and other heavy industries are facing severe production limits through March 15th. And you know you're in bad shape when the fact that you're having to more than half production of key industries is just a footnote in a report about a government error. Another reason this problem happened was a shortage of natural gas. Now, Parts of this next explanation are denied by people in China, but it's like Trump denying colluding with Russia. We all know there's probably something there. This allegation is that, according to the Financial Times, a slump in growth from 2012 to 2016 that went unrecognized in official GDP statistics may have contributed to the planner's miscalculation of how much coal would need to be substituted with gas. This is because the Communist Party allegedly regularly lies about its consistent GDP increases and apparently made the mistake of believing its own lies when determining how much coal would need to be replaced by natural gas. Gas shortages are spreading to the industrial sectors in southern and western China as well after authorities in Beijing diverted the fuel to the north to resolve a shortfall caused by a botched effort to cut coal use. This has led to all sorts of production cuts across the country, including a chemical company in Chongqing saying, this year's spandex might be tight. <coughs> now this might sound like a colossal catastrophe, but and stay with me. Beijing enjoyed unseasonably blue skies and fresh air through November, and it seems like it could have had some real positive impacts on the environment. China has since reversed the ban letting these private citizens burn coal to heat their homes, but it's predicted that by the year 2021 they will be able to switch to natural gas without any deaths. Just think about that next time you hear Trump say he left the climate accords because it gave China an unfair advantage on coal production. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that.